So for a few years early in our marriage, my husband Nathan and I talked about writing a book together. He was the campus staff person for a college ministry called Inner Varsity Christian Fellowship, and we constantly had college students hanging out at our house, asking us all kinds of questions about dating and relationships. We distributed advice with all the confidence of young 20-somethings who had been married for just a couple of years. We thought we were experts at relationships. And I, with many years of babysitting experience and then years of more formal experience working in daycares and as a nanny, also believed that I was an expert at parenting. You can probably guess where this is going. Because then our marriage hit some rough patches. We had kids and I realized that I had no idea what I was doing. Over and over, and probably only more so as time goes on, kids ignore this part of the message, I am making decisions with little to no idea what I'm doing. When my kids ask me if they can do something or see something or go to someone's house, can they watch more TV? Can they get that video game? I have some ideas, but a lot of the time I'm just bluffing that I know what I'm doing. And now we're entering a new phase of parenting where conversations about boyfriends and girlfriends are happening. And let me tell you that I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm prioritizing trust and relationship with my kids and guessing about most of the other stuff. How did I not realize before how much of being a mom is pretending that you know what you're doing? Now, the good news is that I don't have to know exactly what I'm doing all the time. And whether you're a parent or not, neither do you. As we learn new things, experience more, and grow, we adjust our behavior. We experience and offer grace to each other. Our message today isn't really about being a mother or even celebrating mothers, but it is about learning new things. Last week, we began our series called Lies My Preacher Told Me. We're learning new things about the Old Testament together so we don't have to keep bluffing our way through conversations. This series is based on a book of that name by Brent Strawn. And the goal of this series is not to bash or disrespect preachers, well, you know, not the good ones anyway. And I like to think that Tom and Mark and I are pretty careful in what we say, but no one is above making mistakes. And those mistakes usually aren't malicious, at least I hope not, but they can result in mistruths. And maybe that's not as catchy of a title, but what we're going to dig into this series are mistruths my preacher or my parents or my Sunday school teacher told me. They're mistruths that are the result of us not being fully informed. And this this happens all the time, right? It's not always lying per se, but like we feel compelled to speak about all sorts of things that we don't really know about. We bluff our way through answers and like people seem to respond well. So one of the things we do here at Sycamore Creek Church is that we pause during the message to talk. So if you're joining us online, turn to someone watching with you or put your answer to this question in the chat box. Have you ever bluffed your way through something and been caught? Or have you ever noticed someone else bluffing and how did you respond? Take a minute and talk about it. 